Welcome to part 7 of this video tutorial series on animation trees. In this tutorial we'll be exploring various script functions that can be triggered from the animation tree and how we catch them. Once again this tutorial is mainly aimed at programmers and hopefully will be nice and quick. If we look at our animation tree, we see that blend nodes have three functions we can trigger from script. Uh, on init, on become relevant and on cease relevant. All these functions do exactly as you'd expect. On init gets called when the node gets initialized, when the animation tree gets first initialized. On become relevant is a notification that the node has become relevant as part of the final blend, so when the total weight towards this node is greater than zero. And on cease relevant is the opposite, once the total weight towards the node is zero after being greater than it. Uh, for a vast majority of nodes, you won't really need to worry about these functions. Uh, but if you're using any kind of custom or specialized nodes, these can often be used for optimization or handling resetting of values through your animation node. In the last tutorial, we did a few casts to check the validity of the skeletal mesh component's owner, ensuring it was an AT pawn. We are doing that every tick. Now, for optimization purposes, we could move those initial casts and checks out of the tick and into an on become relevant function, which if you go into Visual Studio is exactly what I've done on this AT node blend by posture. Uh, I've moved this initial check and the casting into on become relevant, so this is only get called every time um, our node becomes part of the final blend. And you can see tick anim is only doing a sort of a basic little check here. Um, I've also added on cease relevant and on init, just so you can see what the functions actually are. But the other important thing we need to note is that uh, we do set these three variables here to, to true, um, or whichever variables we're actually using events for. Crawl script event on init, b crawl script event on become relevant, and also on cease relevant. Uh, if these aren't set to true and you're trying to use these functions, the scripts will not actually the, the scripts will not actually catch the function. Optimizations like this might seem pretty minor, but uh, this is only one example of what you might do. Um, any kind of optimization we can get in a game is always crucial, but also you might be uh, you know setting some values on your pawn only the first time an animation node becomes active. Uh, you might want to reset some values on your pawn when it stops being relevant. All those kind of things. So it really depends on the functionality you want to perform in your animation node as to whether you need uh, these script events or not. The other script events we can catch are on an animation sequence themselves. As you can see here, we've got these two options cause actor animend and cause actor anim play. Now it's important to note that uh, these events uh, are captured on the skeletal mesh component's owner, whereas back on this, these are called on the, the um, the, the blend node itself. Uh, these ones are called, for instance, this is a, a pawn we have this um, an, uh, anim tree on. So all these events, the anim end and anim play on all of our animation sequence in the tree will get caught in our AT pawn class. Uh, if we had a weapon or a vehicle or an NPC which had uh, this animation tree, then that's what you'd want to catch the anim play and anim end events on. So as you can see, we've got on anim play, very simple. Um, it passes in the animation node sequence that the event's being called from as the first parameter. And on anim end has got also the sequence of the first parameter, the amount of time of the animation that was played, and the excess time to so the time left over if this animation was stopped halfway through. Uh, from passing in the sequence node, we can get the name of the sequence that was played. We can get the name of the node itself. So if you've got things such as perhaps weapon reloading, uh, you can catch when the reload animation actually gets completed, and then you can add the ammunition to the weapon clip. So how you use these is really up to you. If you're using custom nodes, uh, it might be relevant for actually the become relevant, cease relevant, and init functions. If you're not, um, the on anim end event might be useful for you to catch things like reloading or ending rolls or acrobatic moves or dodges or anything like that to switch states uh, on your pawn class. But really the animation system is powerful enough that how you handle these things can all be done in, in multiple ways and this is just one way that you can do it. Uh, so that's all for this video tutorial. I hope it was useful and I hope you check out the future ones. Cheers.